Welcome back everyone, Michael here with Offshore Citizen. Now on this channel we often talk about tax rules in different countries and optimizing your tax situation, etc. Today I'm going to go the opposite direction and discuss with you when it makes sense to pay a lot of tax. So this comes a little bit from a conversation I was having with a business partner yesterday, but it's something that I think is worth bearing in mind. I've discussed maybe the lifestyle side of it, the fact that you know there's more to life than tax and there's more to life than making money and saving money and all that kind of thing, and you have to make choices that are best based on your value set. But here I'm going to actually talk about the idea of success, in particular financial success, which tax obviously plays into, and when actually it might make a ton of sense for you to pay ta a lot of tax. And I'm not saying that you should or you shouldn't, it depends on your circumstances and you know the industry or business or whatever that you're in. So let's dive in and discuss it. Before we do, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, hit the all notification bell. Thank you for your support, always appreciate it. And if you would like help with relocating abroad, getting residencies and citizenships, forming companies, opening bank accounts, optimizing your international tax to pay the lowest legal amount of tax possible, asset protection, banking, etc., please reach out to us. You can book a call, calendly.com forward slash Michael dash Rosmer, link in the description below, or send a message to our websites, offshorecitizen.net and offshorecapitalist.com. Okay. So uh, I guess here's the, the idea. This is something that I often will talk to clients about. I'll say the objective from a financial perspective is not to pay the lowest amount of tax possible. The objective is to have the most money in your pocket at the end of the day. And part of this is costs, part of this is ease of operation, et cetera. Now, it just happens that the biggest part of that is not costs, it's not payment processing rates, it's not banking, it's not you know all these things, it's opportunity, okay? I get to talk to people from all over the world. I think we have clients from like 57 countries or something now. And one of the things that I found quite remarkable was the number of decamillionaires from California, from the US in general, but from California specifically. So you know, I get to deal with people from all walks of life, from you know, digital nomads, uh, to you know, very successful people in other areas, and from you know, Africa to Australia to Eastern Europe to the US. And I noticed certain trends in that process. And one is just simply the remarkable degree of success and net worth that has been accumulated by people in certain areas. In this particular case, I'm talking specifically about the US and often specifically about places like California and New York, so a few places like that as well. And this was something that a, a good friend of mine, a number of years ago, he had had pretty big uh, financial success and he kind of retired from his business and then he'd ended up moving to New York and was kind of pursuing things. And I remember having a conversation with him because not only is the US high tax, but New York is high tax within the US, pretty much the highest in the country or close to it. And he was saying, you know, the thing is there's just so much opportunity here. A um, mutual friend of ours, you know, was busy meet out doing whatever and met with somebody who wants to take his company, company public, et cetera. And you just don't get that in a bunch of these environments. I remember talking to a client who was uh, raising capital for their company. It was already a pretty successful company, but they were from Asia. And the difference in valuation raising money in Asia versus raising money in the US, in particular in Silicon Valley, was 75 million versus 125 million. So you got to see this gross difference in the proportions by being in one environment versus being in another environment. And I think this is something that people often overlook, and it goes for virtually all walks of life, right? If you're in a situation where you have a career, I remember talking to somebody who worked at Microsoft, and they said, you know, they were allowed to work from anywhere. They were living in uh, Seattle, and they had a foreign citizenship in a pretty low tax country. They were allowed to move back to that country and work there, but the deal was they would have to take the wages of that place. And so they were, I think they were making like $450,000, $500,000 a year uh, living in Washington state, and they'd pay, make 180,000 in this other place. And so even with the tax differential, they were far, far better off living in Seattle than they were living in this other place. So you, that's like you know, wages in terms of work, and you, know, you can see something similar in various parts of Australia, right? There's people who can, I remember friends who had gone there when I was uh, much younger, 
and they ended up bartending or doing whatever. And the hourly wage was pretty high, right? Much more so than you would see in some areas of the world. Then you, know, you have the other, which is people going and raising capital and building big companies. I mean, you can just see, okay, as an investor, it's interesting that you'll see most of the top kind of Silicon Valley investors, the people who have made really good money, uh, have come out of a pretty small or lived in a pretty small geography. Why is that? Well, that's where the deals were. That's where there was this pool of capital being reinvested. So if you wanted to be a venture capitalist located in, I don't know, let's just say, for example, Malaysia, back over the last 20 years, it was really difficult for you to compete in terms of where you would end up with being in Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley, you could raise more money. Silicon Valley, you had access to better deal flow. You had more upside. You had all, all these different things, right? Not to say you would necessarily succeed at that, but the environment made a big difference. Uh, and you can find this in many different regards. Now, the truth is, and part of the thing that I advocate and talk about here quite a bit, is the world is changing a lot. I did a video a while ago on DAOs just describing how you know, people in Africa are raising a $100 million DAO to go invest and do some really cool things. Certainly, the global access to opportunity has changed a lot in the last 10 years. Certainly, the global access to capital in the last 10 years has changed quite a lot. Certainly, the ease of working with people remotely has changed quite a lot. The you know, dispersion of talent, uh, then the consequences of various regulations. It used to be that you know, the regulations maybe weren't so difficult to operate within in, say, the EU, and now they've gotten a lot tougher, and being outside of that might make it easier for you. So there are some trade-offs. The point of this video and the point of this message is not to say you should be one place versus another or that you should make one decision versus another. That's very personal. But it's rather that tax should sort of be a late part of your evaluation criteria. I get a lot of people calling me who it's almost like tax is their first criteria. And I don't think that that's super wise. Okay? You should probably think, okay, what is important to me from a lifestyle standpoint and what's going to serve me best in the vision of where I want to go. If you're in the film industry, you probably need to be in some place like California. It's just the way that it goes. Being in, I don't know, rural Saskatchewan, not really going to work so well for you. If you're in the fashion industry, you know, maybe you need to be in Paris and, or New York or Milan or something like that. You know, there's, there's places that you need to go in order to further your goals because there's an ecosystem of people who are in that same space as you that you can further. It doesn't guarantee your success by any stretch. You might, it's a highly competitive environment to be in LA or something. But you should think about where is it that the opportunity is greatest because it's kind of that story of, you know, do you want to have 100% of a small pie or do you want to have 30% of a huge pie. Well, if the government is going to take 50% of what you make, but you're going to make 10 times more, it might be worth it to go and pay the high tax. On the other hand, if you're in a situation where you, know, you just don't have a lot of opportunity where you're based, well, it might, be, might make sense to relocate accordingly. Now, there's new places to do that, and there's certain advantages this is uh, definitely worth considering. So I hope that helps. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.